Alright, what's going on you guys? Happy Friday. I'm just going to try to do a little quick tool review right here. Uh, you know, for you guys that watch my videos, you know I like Klein tools. But I'm kind of having a love-hate relationship with their non-contact voltage detectors. I had this one first. This is the NCV2. And, you know, there's one under that that just does the basic features. There's also a 3, a 4, and now this is the new 5 that just come out. Uh, the 3 and the 4 are way too big. I don't want something like that in my pocket. I don't want it in my tool bag taking up all that room. This is the perfect size for me. This one also did both high voltage and low voltage. The one that's under this one, I believe, only does high voltage. So this was the best detector for me. Uh, I loved it. Right out of the box, this thing is awesome. It's very well made. I love the material that it's made out of. I love the size. I love the functionality about it. But there is a problem with the tail cap because that also serves as the battery compartment. And the problem is it's attached to the pocket clip. All right, so whenever you're putting this thing in and out of your pocket, in and out of your tool bag, it's constantly pushing up on that. And what ends up happening is it loses contact in the battery compartment. I mean, if you look closely, you can kind of see a little bit of a gap there now. And you can kind of see a little bit of shininess of battery terminal coming through. But, you know, what happened with that thing is I'd be riding along in a van and all of a sudden I'd hear something beeping in the back of the van. And I thought, what in the hell is that beeping back there? And then come to find out it's this thing and it's turning itself on and off because it's kind of getting contact then it's losing it so you know what i did through some research on the internet you know one guy kind of discovered the problem I, I wish i could remember his name but i don't i'd give him credit for it but if you take this thing apart there's two little spring-loaded battery clips in there and you can kind of take your little screwdriver or something and bend those down so they make contact inside a little bit better but even after you do that, you're constantly finding yourself pushing down on this tail cap, making sure that it's in there before you use it because you know you don't know if the thing's working or not. Because sure enough, uh, not only did it turn itself on and off, but it also had a habit of whenever you went to use it, it would sort of power itself back off. You'd turn it on, it'd power off, almost like the batteries were dead. You could put brand new batteries in it and it would do the same thing. So you would have to bend those terminals down and all that stuff. So that took what is otherwise a fantastic probe right here and kind of turned it into something that's, I guess you could say it's dangerous. I mean, you know, we're kind of putting our life on the lines when we use these little suckers to take a quick reading to see if we're live or not. And you kind of need it to work. It's a fairly important thing. So that's what I liked about this new one. You can see the size comparison. It's not that much bigger. It's a little bit bigger, but not bad. Uh, it's laid out very nice. Uh, the buttons are real simple. Tip is nice, kind of like the other one, but it's got the screw on cap. So not only is it gonna make changing batteries very quick and easy, but it's gonna seal that shut. You're not gonna have to worry about moisture getting in there. And you shouldn't have any of those problems with the thing acting crazy and erratic, turning itself on and off. But I get this thing today and I cut it out of the pack. I can't wait to use it. It does have a laser pointer on it. That's the extra feature with this one. So if you look, you got a little laser pointer, you know. You do have to hold that in pretty good or the laser will go off. I mean, you've got to hold down on it pretty tight. But you've got something neat there if you're out in the field, you know, a contractor. He might want to point at something like over there at the disconnect box. I don't know if you can see that, but he might want to point to a guy, hey, go work on that or check out that contactor. So anyway, you've got a little laser pointer if you want to use that. Uh, but this one is just a simple on. It's got a tiny little red light. You can hardly see it. If you push it one more time, you go up to your low voltage so you can sense 24 volts through thermostat wires. Little bitty blue light. Whereas on this sucker, when you turn it on, you had a nice lit up tip in a dark room. It was amazing how useful that light was because it projects forward and it lights up your whole work area. So it would light up your outlet or your wire, whatever you were checking. If you push and hold the button, it switches over to the blue. 
and now you can sense your low voltage. So normally, I keep it in the high voltage setting. All right, so this, there's no doubt in whether this thing is on, it you know, lit up your work area, it was really nice. So that was kind of a letdown here. But the huge letdown about this thing is the volume of the tone. It is so low in volume, you can't even hear the thing. If there's any noise like the heat pump right here, you're not gonna be able to hear this whatsoever. You're gonna see the light light up. I don't know if, if the phone will pick it up or not, but you can see right there, I'm lit up. I've got voltage, of course, on my line voltage going into the contactor. See, I try to get quiet, see if you can hear that. I don't know if the phone's picking it up or not, but I can barely hear that. I've gotta put my ear right down next to it very low in volume, whereas this one, really nice. I mean, see how much that lights up? Look at that, guys. I mean, this thing does a fantastic job. So imagine, you know, you're in a, a situation in a dark room, you're trying to light up your outlet you're working on, you know, for you electricians out there. This little thing is great. And it goes red, lights up good, and it's a beeping alert. You know, it, it beeps, whereas this one is just a solid tone. And this one, you can easily hear it even with the noise of the heat pump, whereas this one, you can just barely hear it. So this is kind of turning out to be a huge disappointment right here, but it does work good. So, you know, right now, let's see, red is high voltage. So of course, we are lit up. We've got our high voltage there in and out of the contactor so we know we're lit up if we wanted to do low voltage you hit the button one time now it turns blue now right here on this old linux they use black for both common and 24 on the coil of the contactor so you think okay it's not colored which one's hot which one's common without even having to get a meter out of your bag you can touch this and see that i've got nothing there but then if I come over here to this one, she's lighting up and that tells me that's 24 volts over here on this side. So that's the one I'm gonna have to be careful with and not touch it to any kind of metal or anything. Same thing here on our thermostat wires. If we get in here, I can come in down here and you know I can tell that I've got power on my yellow and my orange and my red. Uh, right up there, see I'm touching my white wire and that's pretty good there. I like that. that. That's impressive because it's not getting any stray voltage from down here. It is sensitive enough to where I'm touching that white wire and I can tell I don't have power there. So in the winter time, if I wanted to do a quick, easy check on a system once I've thrown it into defrost, I could just throw this thing on that white wire and tell if it's sending 24 back through that wire. Or a very commonly overlooked problem is that white wire not even being hooked up at the indoor unit. So when the unit goes into defrost, it goes into air conditioning and it's not turning on the electric heat and you get that complaint of the unit blowing cold air. You come out and check everything and the pressures are fine, you're not low on refrigerant, it's not froze up, the defrost is working good, but what you don't know is that wire was hooked up at the outdoor unit but not at the indoor unit. You know, maybe one guy hooked it up out here and used white and the other guy hooked up the indoor unit and used black. So you're sending 24 volts through this wire, but it's not going to anything inside to turn on the electric heat strips. So that's something that's commonly overlooked. So the easy way to diagnose that would be to just throw the unit into heat, jack the temperature up so you make W2, then the indoor unit, if the wire is good and hooked up in there and connected to out here, it will send 24 volts out to here and it will just be sitting here even not in defrost you're going to have 24 volts there so you could throw this little gizmo on there and if it lights up you know that you're good uh, but that's definitely something to check in the winter time that's that's a, a little trick i learned a long time ago with some of those nuisance calls of the unit blowing cold air something to keep in mind guys but anyway this thing does work good but i'm just very disappointed in that volume i cannot hear that whatsoever and I know the video is getting a little bit long, so let's just run inside here where it's quiet. We'll go to the indoor unit. 
we will go to the outlet over here that the condensate pump is plugged into just so you can kind of hear what I'm talking about. So right here is the NCV5. Okay. And let's go ahead and take it off that low voltage setting. All right, so we're back to the red light. Now we're sensing high voltage only. We can distinguish our neutral leg, nothing there. There's our hot leg, but then the tone, I'll let you listen to that. Okay, now right here is the NCV2. And again, right there is our neutral leg. You'll either get nothing or a very slow beep. And then we move over here and, oh, hang on, I turned it off. Get her back on, okay. All right, so right there, neutral. There's nothing there, but we've got that nice light you can imagine that in the dark, it'll light that up good so you can see your plug. So we've got nothing there. If we move over here to our hot leg. All right, so this thing's acting up on me right now. Right in the middle of the video, this damn thing is acting up. That's what drives me crazy about this freaking piece of crap. And I'm telling you, I, right there, see, I just pushed on the tail cap. Look at, look at it right there. It's doing it right now. I'm pushing on the tail cap and I'm manipulating this thing coming on and off. So right there, we just caught it on video. It came on by itself right there. I didn't even touch the button that time. It, it's all through that tail cap, and I swear I hope somebody at Klein sees this. I hope somebody responds back to me. I'm gonna put my email down below here. I'd really love to hear from a Klein rep about this because this freaking thing is damn dangerous out in the field. And that's the whole reason I bought the new one, and now you can't even hear the beep on it. And I swear I hate to be saying that about Klein tools because I love my Klein tools. You know how many videos I've done showing my Klein tools, but now these things are driving me up the wall. I had a Craftsman non-contact detector that I have had for probably 15 years and other than the pocket clip finally broke on it that thing still works to this day I would trust it with my life in a heartbeat it works great it's got a loud beep it lights up it works every time you need it to work whereas this does not it's off right now and I'm trying to turn it on so there's the low voltage setting you hold the button and it switches to green but there was no beep you're not hearing any kind of a beep there and see it's not working it's it's completely malfunctioning right now crap and I I wanted you to hear the difference between the two beeps here and I can't even get this thing to work now okay there it beeped let's turn it back on see if it'll work okay there now let's see if we can get it to work long enough to hear the beep okay so you hear that that's what a non-contact should sound like. A beep alert that you can hear very easily without having to listen to. But then here we are back here on the five. And for all I know, the phone might make it sound louder than what it is. But trust me, guys, you can barely hear this thing. Out at the heat pump, can't hear it at all. So anyway, there's just a quick video on these two tools. I'll try to include some links and stuff like that. And like I said, hopefully somebody at Klein can get back to me on this because I would love to hear from them. Uh, you know, I hate to go out and buy other brand tools. And here I've already spent between these two, you know, 20 bucks for one, 25 for another one. You know, I've spent close to $50 on two instruments that you know, one is not trustworthy at all and borderline dangerous. And the other one is fairly disappointing because of the beep. Other than that, this would be a nice little detector if they would have incorporated the light up technology in the tip and had the same type of beeping alert and some volume on it, we'd have been okay. But that's how things go, man. When they don't take the time to do a little bit of research, you know, talk to some guys, HVAC guys, electricians out in the field, the guys who are using this stuff and get some feedback before they start mass producing this stuff. You know, why would you not want to work the bugs out of a tool like that before you, you know, make them by the millions and put them in guys' pockets and maybe get them in a bad situation out in the field? Uh, 
so again, I hate to be bad mouth inclined, but I mean, right there it was on camera. That was not set up in any sort of way. It literally did it right there on camera in front of you. Just what I was talking about. So, uh, sorry guys, I know the video ran a little bit long, but you know, it, it's something important, you know? And I know you guys don't want to waste your money on bad tools any more than I do. I like good stuff, like my DeWalt drill, my 12 volt, my UEI thermometer, which I love, and my good old yellow jacket Titan manifold. I love them. Never had a problem with those babies. And look at the date. Right there's the date. There's no lying. That is 2008 when I got these babies. I have a set of 22 and a set of 410. Neither one of them ever gave me a problem. Not a leak, not nothing. So hopefully I didn't just jinx that. <laughs> Anyway, guys, as always, I appreciate you watching. If you like the video, leave me a thumbs up. If you have one of these and you've encountered similar type problems, leave me a comment below. Let me know. Let Klein know. And then hopefully we can get a little bit of feedback from Klein on that. So anyway, guys, I hope you have a great weekend. We've been having some awesome weather, but winter's right around the corner, man. Ah, I will catch you on the next video, guys. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Bye.